let us all that we can to build a better future. We've got a big fight for all of you. And there's been reports of a Cheeto and a turtle fighting. Uh-oh. Now, confirmation Uh-oh. Uh, of the fight has not been seen, but it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, the fallout of that impeachment impeachment trial to where the future of the GOP as a party uh, probably might be called into question uh, in the 2022 midterm election cycle. Now, we've seen this before with the Tea Party way back in 2010 when mm-hmm. a lot of Tea Party candidates went against the Republican establishment. And... Well, it looks like um, those that are loyal to Trump or is it a potential Trump candidates or who uh, like President Donald Trump might consider running against establishment Republicans uh, for their respective House and Senate seats. And we will see what what the real fallout will be, uh, especially in regards to what the future of the GOP will be. So I guess Nancy, uh, Chucky Boy, and good old Joe 30330 will not get their wish of a responsible GOP party because, let's face it, Donald Trump is going to be talked about for quite some time. And corporate media, looks like Trump is still providing you your uh, daily fix. So let's go ahead and play this first video from Case Study QB. They're going to be talking about, really, um, this potential fallout and this fight between uh, former President Donald Trump and Turtle Boy Mitch McConnell. Or growing inside the Republican Party. Former President Trump escalating his feud with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, in a scathing letter, really kind of a printed series of tweets, after McConnell, of course, publicly accused Trump of bearing responsibility, direct responsibility, for the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, though that was uh, after he decided to vote to acquit the former president in the Senate trial. You've really got to read the whole letter to get the full gist of it, but let me read you part of it. The former president writes, quote, Mitch is a dour, sullen, and unsmiling political (laughs) hack. And if Republican senators are going to stay with him, they will not win again. Our Jessica Dean joins us on Capitol Hill. Republican leaders, um, I mean, outside of what Mitch McConnell thinks, and let me know if you've heard from him, but just the bigger concern from leadership in the party about the, the division that this just, you know, exacerbates. That's exactly right. So we have, I have reached out to Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's office to see if they have any response to this. So far, we haven't heard anything in response to this latest letter from former President Trump. But Poppy, you're exactly right. Republican leadership here has their eyes very much trained on 2022. They want to win back majorities in the House and the Senate. But as they're trying to do that, this rift and public spat is just spilling out into the open. It continues to do so in various instances. This particular one between former President Trump and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, chief among them. We saw uh, McConnell, of course, voting to acquit acquit former President Trump, uh, but then going on to publicly talk about how he lays all responsibility at his feet, believes he is morally responsible for what happened here during the deadly insurrection on January 6th, but voted to acquit uh, because of the constitutionality question. And now we have this response from Trump. Here's what Senator Lindsey Graham had to say about it. Take, take a listen to this. They're now at each other's throat. I'm more worried about 2022 than I've ever been. I don't want to eat our own. President Trump is the most consequential Republican in the party. If Mitch McConnell doesn't understand that, he's missing a lot. But my beef is not with Mitch McConnell because he has the same. Okay, uh, let's uh, just do a quick little uh, commentary on this. So, so first, number one, what's the big takeaway from this? We have to remember that the Republican establishment has clearly um, forgotten its lesson uh, in 2016. They think that Trump, would, I guess for, for people like Turtle Boy Mitch McConnell, mm-hmm. he, he thinks that it's all said and done with, that perhaps maybe things will go back to normal. But Trump has changed things, and unlike Bernie Sanders... Trump is able to challenge the system, and more it's importantly, alarming, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's why the alarms are happening in the background. It's definitely a sound effect we well, employ. Yes, uh, that that's not an actual fire truck or ambulance. But the, but the thing we got to take away from this is that Trump can rally his supporters, and a lot of those supporters will go to Trump yeah. than any of the Republican establishment leadership. And remember, in 2016, there were, I think, uh, at least approximately, what, 16 candidates that were trying to get the, the nomination for the Republican Party? Mm-hmm. Trump beat legacy names or new up-and-comers within the GOP. He was able to smack them around, and the people, the Republican voters, supported him. 
And the same thing happened in 2022. He was able to secure the nomination and push forward and win. So the thing is, the Republican Party is living under a rock if they think that somehow they're going to take away Trump's power over uh, his supporters. It's it, it's a fool's errand. And, you know, it may, maybe they're just as blind as the DNC establishment. Before we get to the final video, Daniel, let's get your comments on this. Yeah, so this goes to the thing that I was even talking about back in 2016 that would inevitably Trump would do, which is split the Republican base, which is exactly what they're talking about when they talk about infighting, which we usually don't see within the Republican Party. Now, how is this infighting? What is it broken down by? Well, Mitch McConnell, I think, is the avatar. Well, there's obviously the Trump branch. Mm-hmm. But then there's the Mitch McConnell branch, which is the other one, which is the professional Republican that goes to Wall Street, that owns an oil company, that does something of that nature, uh, who, you know, that's that's the business professional Republican, which is really the core of the old Republican Party. It's what they all built themselves around. That's why, you know, that's why Jeb Bush was relevant to some people. And now Trump has split the base and now they're going to be fighting each other, which would be wonderful if someone like Sanders turned out to be a different person and was in office right now, would it be wonderful? They would be in disarray. But again, the Democrats are also in their own form of um, a split. The problem is that progressives are still sticking with the Democratic Party and sticking together with the Democratic Party when they should be fighting. But in just in general, Mitch said what he had to say. Because he doesn't align with Trump, he worked with Trump, and now I think Kit has it exactly. Now that Trump is gone, no longer relevant, he's like, okay, let's get my uh, point of view back in the majority and uh, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, uh, that's, it's not going to work. Let's play that final video, and then we'll give our final comments on this story as well. Well, this morning, a civil war growing inside the Republican Party. Former President Trump escalating his feud with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell Uh, in a scathing letter, really kind of a printed series of tweets, after McConnell, of course, publicly accused Trump of bearing responsibility, direct responsibility, for the deadly insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, though that was uh, after he decided to vote to acquit the former president in the Senate trial. You've really got to read the whole letter to get the full gist of it, but let me read you Um, part of it. Did we play that video already? The former president writes, quote, Mitch is a dour... Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we already did play that uh, video. I think that's the second uh, Twitter link. Let's get that set up. Here we go. That we need to knock this off. Kevin McCarthy is the leader of the House Republicans. He's taken a different approach to uh, President Trump. I would advise Senator McConnell to do that. Of course, uh, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy going down to visit former President Trump in Florida and also, of course, choosing not to punish uh, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for her lies and conspiracy theories. Uh, and she was later stripped, of course, from her committees uh, by a full House vote. But what this sets up, Jim and Poppy, is a potential for a showdown in the 2022 primaries. We saw uh, McConnell writing about what he cares about is electability and and. and and making sure that whomever uh, wins the primary can be elected. And you see former President Trump in his letter saying he's supporting primary opponents that go with him. So will we see a showdown? That's what people are talking about now. Jim and Poppy. Jessica Dean. Thanks. Policy views. Let's go ahead and pause that video. So what's what's the big takeaway here? Remember, the House Minority Leader, McCarthy, is visiting Trump at his Mar-a-Lago residence, right? So that already tells me one thing that House Republicans are already ready to fall fall in line behind Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And that means, yes, some of these Republicans will be from the establishment, but they see the Trump brand as being part of the GOP. That's Trump's legacy. So already I think there's there's poise for infighting. And sooner or later, Mitch McConnell will lose his power and influence. And remember... It's it's it wasn't uh, these establishment politicians that got you know Trump into office. It was Donald Trump able to rally an army and get people to to vote for him yeah. in 2016 and likewise in 2020. You know they're not going to just disappear overnight. So this will happen. And one of the things that that possibly might might happen is. And this is maybe an unlikely scenario. Perhaps maybe Donald Trump will run for uh, as a third party person if he can't get in the GOP. He might even divide the GOP even further. So, I mean, that that is something that should be taken into account. Uh, no matter what, uh, corporate media, 
you're still going to get your fix of your daily dose of Trump. So in some ways, I think the ratings are saved because I think they're salivating to the point of seeing this GOP civil war. Yeah, and so this is where we're going with the Republicans right now. And I sort of want to mirror it because like right now, this split is happening to a party that is known as being very easy to centralize and not splitting. And there's already some discussion about splitting the party up the Trumpian side of on one side and the more traditional businessy on the other, you know, what would be one of the most offensive things that I can think of happening is the Republican party splits before the democratic party does, because that means that Republicans who basically agree on most issues, just maybe not like procedure decided they would need to split and Democrats and progressives, which are supposed to be very, very different people turn out to be closer aligned than the Republican Party is to itself. So all I'm saying is that if we're already seeing this disunion, which we sort of saw coming with Trump in, to begin with when he first got elected, if the over account, the, 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 the result is progressives going, yeah, but we're still going to do whatever the Democrats say because they've promised us in the future something really good. Well, I can ask another dollar out of kit. <laughs> and that's not going to happen because I can say one thing right now about the Democratic Party. Um, progressives, it's, it's a fool's errand to try and reform the Democratic Party. We tried, we saw it with our revolution. We saw it with Justice Democrats and brand new Congress. Nothing has changed. And in order for there to be real kind of effective pushback, we must really talk about an effective third party. We need to start building a third party and probably do it before the GOP does or either that Trump supporters do. But you know what? I mean, if people just keep on laying their hopes for the Democratic Party, you're still going to get screwed over. And don't worry. We got a couple of stories talking about how the Democrats are going to screw us over with the help of corporate media as well, because they're their biggest cheerleaders mm -hmm. 2022 will be very interesting and i can't wait to report on it so there we yeah. go 